I'm going to show you how to send REST requests. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. This is part three in a 10 part video series in which we're exploring how to make REST API calls. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to send REST requests. Before we go on to our next REST API, I wanna show you about this thing called the visualize view. So let's learn about visualizers. The visualize button, when you click on it, allows you to specify a visualizer that will display the information from this response body in a more visual way. So these two screenshots are showing us the same REST request. They're showing us the same response body, but notice that when we visualize the response body, it's showing up as a bar chart. So let's go back to the lab environment and see how you can set up these things called visualizers. To set up a visualizer, let's go to an existing REST request. Let's go to the response body for that request and click on the visualize button. And as you can see, we have not set up a visualizer for this particular request. Instead, we're getting a message that says, you need to set up the visualizer. To visualize responses, you need to add a pm.visualizer.set method, whatever that is, um, and do that either in your test or your pre-request scripts. Well, what on earth are they talking about? Well, I'm going to show you. To set these up, uh, we are going to use this method called pm.visualizer.set. We'll talk more about that in a moment. What they're saying here is that you need to invoke that method either from a request pre-request script or from its tests. Now, the pre-request script, as its name suggests, allows you to specify a script written in JavaScript a script that gets run before this REST operation is actually executed. So when you click the send button before it actually runs this REST operation, it will run the JavaScript code that we put here on this tab. The next tab is labeled tests, but I'd like you to pretend for a moment that this tab was instead labeled post request script. That tab, the one labeled tests, allows you to specify JavaScript code that gets invoked after the request has been run. One of the most common things that people do in the post stage is to run different tests to see, did we get back the response that we were expecting? And we can talk about tests later on, but that's not the only thing that you can do on the test tab. Again, the test tab generically allows you to run whatever JavaScript code that you want, and that code runs after the re uh, quest is executed. So in my experience, it generally makes the most sense if we're going to use this pm.visualizer.set method. In general, you're going to use it on this tab here labeled tests. So let's take advantage of the documentation that they have down here. If you click on visualizing responses, let's take a look at the documentation and learn more about how this all works. Now, as you can see, we have been taken to learning.postman.com. That's the first time I've mentioned that website in this video series. There's tons of useful information that you can use to learn more about Postman there. So I'll leave it to you to explore further. But if we go to learning.postman.com slash docs slash sending dash request slash visualizer, it gives you loads of detailed information about how to do these things called visualizers, including there's a nice video here that shows you how, but I'm gonna give you a concise version of how this works. So we're going to, first of all, set up a new collection. And to do this, uh, we're gonna take advantage of this button here that's gonna allow us to run a, a request in Postman. So let's go ahead and click that. And 
as you can see, it's going to fork an existing collection. This is a collection that the folks at Postman's set up. We're going to fork their collection so that we'll have our own private copy that we can run and modify to our heart's content. So we're about to fork a collection into our workspace. Again, I have a workspace called Demos. Perhaps you called yours the same thing. So let's click Fork Collection. The collection is going to get forked into whatever workspace you happen to have open already. And it wants to know what you want your fork to be called and what workspace you want it placed in. Again, by default, it's going to place this fork of the collection into whatever workspace that you happen to be in. So I'm going to go ahead and fork this collection. And as you can see, I have a new collection here called Visualizer Examples. Uh, that's actually a fork from their collection called Visualizer Examples. If we look at this collection, it's got a pair of different requests that they've automatically set up for us here. Uh, one is called Visualizer Table. Let's actually take a look at that one. So here under Visualizer Table, you can see that uh, we're doing a post. So this is a request that's going to create something new. And it's doing so at a location called postman-echo.com. Um, postman-echo.com is a site that's set up by the fine folks at Postman to allow you to do all sorts of different types of requests. For example, instead of doing a post, blah, 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 post, you uh, can also do a get, get, or a post, post, put, put, delete, delete. Um, again, their documentation talks about exactly how that works, but we're going to go with what we originally had here. Now, if we run this, again, a post needs a body. So here's the stuff that's going in the body. It looks like it's just some random names and some random email addresses. Let's do a send, and in our response body, as you can see, we've got some random names and email addresses. So here's a random person named Sonia and her email address. Here's a random person named Jerry and his email address. Again, this is what the data, the response data, the response body looks like in the native JSON format. But wouldn't it be nice if we could click on the Visualize button and see the same information in a hopefully more visual, easy to understand way. Let's do that. We'll click on visualize. And as you can see, as the name of the request suggests, the visualization that it's doing here is showing us this data as a table. So this is the same people we saw before, Sonia and Jerry and so forth, and their email addresses. But instead of looking like this, or ye gads, instead of looking like that, it looks prettier. Let's look at the next request. So this too is doing a post post. Uh, let's go ahead and send it. Again, if we look at the body, uh, all this one's doing is uh, generating some random numbers. So we did a post to create some records with some random numbers and in its JSON format, here are the random numbers, along with a bunch of other information that the, the REST server returned to us. But I don't want to look at this data this way. I would rather look at it this way. Now, you'll notice here, it appears that we only have one bar. Well, actually, uh, we have multiple bars. If I just scroll down, you can see we've got multiple bars, but I can't see them all. Well, we could resize this here, but still, we, we can't see it all. My screen is probably not as large as yours, so maybe you're actually seeing all these bars. But imagine you could see all these bars. So these different bars represent the data that we passed in. That data got returned to us, and because we set up a visualizer, the data is being visualized as a bar chart. Now, I don't want to settle for having to scroll around to see uh, the data that it's trying to display here. So this is actually going to be a good opportunity for us to go look at the tests tab that I mentioned before. Again, you can do the visualizer either in the pre request script tab or the test tab. Usually it'll be the test tab. And in here, you can do lots of different things. Uh, the, some of the key things that you're doing are, in line number one, you are setting up what's known as a handlebar template. Now, what is a handlebar template? 
Hey Brian, excuse the interruption. V Gandalf here with a note. Check out the URL in the YouTube description for all the promotions VMware Learning has available. So let's go back to our web browser, open up a new tab, and in this tab, let's do the following. Let's go to handlebarsjs.com where you can find all about what these things called handlebars is all about. All we need to know about handlebars right now is this is a templating mechanism that allows us to specify a string that's going to act as a template that Postman's going to be able to insert into. Again, there's loads of information about handlebars here, but this is not a tutorial on handlebars. So we're going to go back to Postman, and in Postman, looking at our tests, again, you can see that at the beginning of our tests, we're setting up a variable called template, and everything that you see following from here on out is a handlebar template into which we're going to do some substitutions. Now, much of what you see here is just some uh, HTML code and some JavaScript to, to actually render what we're trying to display. But if you look real closely here on this page, you'll notice a number here that's specifying the height of our bar chart. Why don't we change that to something smaller, such as 50? We'll save our changes. We'll send our request again. We'll click on Visualize. And you'll notice that by modifying the code here, I have managed to change the height of the bar chart. Now, there's a whole lot more going on in this code this code's doing things such as setting up the color scheme, it's setting up the graph, it's setting up the positions of the bars. But if you scroll down towards the bottom, after we've defined that whole template on lines one through lines one through 51, down on the bottom, you can see that we're doing two things here. Ultimately, what we need to do is to call that method we saw mentioned before called pm.visualizer.set. We're passing into that the handlebar template that we set up in lines 1 through 51 and we're telling it this is the data that we want you to use when running that template. We're going to take the data in the template, that's what we defined up above, and we're going to take the data that we're specifying here on line 56 and that's what's going to get fed into the template. So let's talk about line 56. Well, line 56 is using a variable called response. The, you don't have to call this variable response. It oftentimes is called response. But what is response? Look at line 53. Line 53 says, let's declare a new variable called response. And what it contains is the response that was returned when we ran this request. And it's taking a look at that response in its JSON format. If you just look at the response itself, it's going to be uh, just a text string that happens to be in JSON format, but since it's just a text string, you won't actually be able to pick out individual pieces of data. But when you call response, excuse me, when you call pm.response.json, that takes that JSON data, breaks it up into all the different individual pieces so that we can easily get to whatever piece of data that we want to from the response. So you will oftentimes in these test scripts see a line that says, var, typically the variable we called response, equals pm, that's short for postman, this is a postman method, pm.response.json. In this particular case, we're using that response variable in line 56, going into the data that returned and getting the, the actual data. That data from the response is what's being fed into this template so that we can generate this lovely bar chart. Now, that's just a quick introduction into visualizers. If you want to know more, again, you've seen two places to go to. One is the handlebars page, and the other is the page that you're taken to. When you, when you go to the visualize tab and it's blank, there is a link that tells you all sorts of things about how to use the visualizer mechanism in general. So we'll leave it to you, the viewer, to experiment on your own and learn all sorts of things that you can do with handlebars and visualizers.
Join me in the next video for more example APIs.